Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a science fiction thriller film, Other Life. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Set in a future world, a biological form of virtual reality is invented. People can simply put one nanotechnological eye drop into the eye, and experience a customized virtual reality. They can travel to any part of the world in their mind, whilst their body is at home. You can easily experience the temperate sea wind in Hawaii, skiing in the Alps, hiking in a dense virgin forest, or gliding at an altitude of 10,000 meters. It is possible to experience a whole new life for a year in virtual reality, while only a minute would pass in the real world. A person can see the world during a lunch break, queuing in Disney World for the Ferris wheel would no longer be necessary. The inventor of this technology is Ren, a lead researcher at a technology company. Five days before the program launch, Ren is doing the final test. While she is experiencing a skiing simulation, there is a bug in the program. Ren is trapped in a loop, experiencing the same day over and over again. She has a seizure and is on the edge of breaking down. She can only keep telling herself that this is not real. Finally, she wakes up from the virtual reality. Soon she figures out that it was because a programmer wrote an incorrect code. After fixing the bug, she secretly takes a test tube of the special eye drops to the hospital. She is there to see her comatose brother. Ren didn't originally invent this technology for money. She wants to use the inserted memories to wake him up. Four years ago, while diving together, her brother had an accident he hit a reef and drowned. After that, he has been in a vegetative state in the hospital. Ren blames herself for not being able to save him. So she hopes that rebuilding his memory of drowning can help him recover. However, this research is very expensive. She can't do it on her own. So she co-founded a biotechnology company with an entrepreneur called Sam. They're going to market the product as virtual travel. Ren puts an eye drop into her brother's eye. His eyeball moves a bit, which surprises Ren. When she returns to the company, she is criticized by Sam for using the product for her private purpose. They haven't launched the product yet, but their company is in trouble financially. Sam requests that Ren develops a virtual prison to solve the financial problem. Because the government have offered them a large sum of money for the product, so that the prisoners can finish one year of imprisonment in just one minute. However, Ren rejects Sam's proposal. The reason she would like to bring this product to the market, are mainly to make money, and at the same time, to let the customers expand their experience. However, to trap people in virtual world is not her original intention. What's more, this technology is still undeveloped, there are bugs they haven't found in the program. Sam doesn't consider her concerns, they have an argument, and Ren leaves the company in anger. Later, Ren comes home, and lets her boyfriend experience the latest virtual skiing simulation. It leaves her boyfriend wanting more, instead of a hormone game. So he takes another tube of eye drops, and wants to experience it again. However, he mistakes the one that Ren has designed for her brother. As a result, the boyfriend has a seizure, and soon becomes unconscious. Not long after, he is sent to the hospital, but unfortunately pronounced dead. The police are going to sue Ren for improper use of drugs. They have enough evidence to send her to trial. She might be in prison for 10 to 15 years. But Sam and the government have reached an agreement, if Ren agrees to become the first prisoner in a virtual prison for a year, and let the company collect relative data, the government will drop all the charges. A programmer has finished the development of the so-called virtual prison system. The test can start immediately once she agrees to be the first volunteer. One year of solitary confinement in a virtual prison equals one minute in real life. Ren has no other choice but to agree. With the eye drop tripping into her eye, her mind enters a tiny dark cell in an instant. There is nothing in this single room, except for a large screen counting down her prison sentence. There is some water, cans, and toiletries in the cupboard. On the floor there is a yoga mat and an electronic whiteboard. On the first day, Ren does lots of exercise and writing on the whiteboard, in order to kill time. 24 hours later, she is awakened by the red flash on the screen. The number on the screen changes from 001 to 002. Ren looks around, she finds that everything has been reset. There is nothing different from yesterday. It is only the first day. Ren feels overwhelmed right now. In this virtual prison, there are no friends, entertainment, nor even win, let alone watching Daniel CC movies. Life is harder than that in a normal prison. Her days become lonely, desperate, and endless. To maintain her mental health, she writes as many codes every day, and talks to herself. She has to imagine another person is talking to her. 
Finally, she spends a whole year in the virtual prison. On her last day, she is waiting to get her freedom. She doesn't expect that the counter resets to 001. It looks like there is a bug in the program. Ren breaks down, smashing everything in anger, then lays down on the floor. Suddenly, she feels a breeze. Curious, Ren gets up and checks the walls. Right then, she finds a crack in the wall, so she climbs out through the crack and comes to a big abandoned warehouse. Ren is surprised to find a room filled with bottled water and cans and another room with lots of monitors. She can see that there are 12 cameras monitoring her cell for 24 hours. Ren realizes that she is not in virtual reality, but in the real world. She has wasted one year in a real prison. She is wondering what is going on, and who is monitoring her. Suddenly, she hears footsteps outside of the room. It is the security that is monitoring her. She picks up the car key on the table, and escapes into the car. She goes to her company, and finds that it is empty. Ren then goes to her apartment, which has already been rented out to others. Ren doesn't know what to do, so she calls the police. The police follow her to the warehouse. Strangely, the cell, food and monitors are gone. There is no evidence at all. Ren turns to her ex-colleague for help, who gives her two shocking pieces of information. Sam has brought the virtual travel system to the market. He has also applied the technology to different fields, including military, judicial, education, and even gray industries. The shares of her company have risen significantly. Sam became a billionaire. Also, much to her shock, Ren's boyfriend didn't die. He recovered after a few days of staying in the hospital. Ren's friend didn't know where Ren has been since the accident. Sam told everyone that Ren sold her shares and enjoyed a good life somewhere else. Nobody has ever doubted that. Ren finally understands that she was set up by her partner Sam. He did all this to steal her research. With her friend's help, Ren finds her boyfriend, sneaks into the company with him, and retrieves her hard drive, where she stores the code to wake her brother up. Now that she has lost her company, her only wish is to save her brother. During her confinement, she has improved the code. After testing, Ren brings the updated eye drops to the hospital. She puts the eye drops into her brother's eye. Her brother slowly opens his eyes. Ren is so happy to see that. But the next minute, her brother suddenly has a seizure. Ren realizes that the program can't alter her brother's memory. Her brother is experiencing the sensation of drowning over and over again. Seeing her brother suffering, Ren decides to let go. Heartbroken, she unplugs her brother's life support. It's shown that this technology was originally invented by Ren's dad. It's his lifetime work, but he gave it up later, because in his eyes, this technology has severe problems. The first one is a safety concern. Any improper or excessive usage could lead to seizure or becoming brain dead. The second concern is about morality. Her father worries that this technology could be used illegally. Her father has been warning her not to touch this technology, but Ren would not listen. She wanted to use it to heal her brother. She thought she could perfect it and avoid all the risks. Now she finally knows her efforts were put in vain. Suddenly Sam shows up in the hospital and says something very strange, like who would have to live in the real world once they can live in virtual reality. Ren's vision starts to twist. She realizes that she is still in virtual reality. Suddenly, she awakens and finds herself sitting on the test chair in her company. However, she realizes that only eight minutes passed in real time. It's revealed that her boyfriend did die, and she was put in a virtual prison. But in her subconsciousness, she doesn't want any of this to have happened. She also worries that her father's concern will come to pass. All her experience after she escaped from the prison is still in virtual reality, this is the scariest thing about virtual reality, because it can sense the user's expectations and fear, and interact with the user's subconsciousness to create a dream that is too real to tell. After all this, Ren has made up her mind. She tells Sam that she is going to terminate this research. Sam can't understand and asks her why she would give up such a promising project. Ren doesn't explain, and then leaves with her patent. Confused by her reaction, Sam studies Ren's data during the confinement, and discovers she broke out of the prison in virtual reality, which means the program isn't unalterable. It can interact with people's subconsciousness and broaden the user's mind. Sam is very excited about the new discovery. To collect more data, he tricks Ren to come back to the lab, and puts the eye drops into her eye while she is not paying attention. As such, Ren is thrown into the virtual prison again. But this time, she knows how the program works, so she starts to control the program. The time in the virtual prison goes quicker. Soon she awakens, 
While Sam is concentrating on observing the data, Ren pushes him over, and wipes the rest of the eye drops from the corner of her eye into Sam's eye. She wants him to experience the horrible virtual reality too. Sam experiences unprecedented loneliness and fear in the virtual prison. He's shocked that there is no even Daniel CC movie for fun. Because of that, in just one day, Sam breaks down. His body starts to twitch. Sam spends a horrible year in the virtual prison. On the last day, when he thinks everything is going to end, the counter resets to 001. Sam screams in despair as Ren did before him. Ren injects him with the antidote and releases him from the infinite nightmare. Sam decides to give up this research at last. Later, Ren and her father come to the hospital. Ren unplugs her brother's life support and lets him leave this world in peace. Thanks to those horrible virtual experiences, she finally makes peace with herself. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.